Welcome to English Central's EduGeek webinar series. This is webinar number five, Teaching Unplugged. I'm Tyson, and if you've uh, been to our webinars before, you've probably heard me speak, or maybe there was audio problems and you didn't hear me speak. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, uh, hopefully everything is going to go well, well this time. All right. So what you should be looking at right now is a nice little cartoon, and uh, just take a quick, a quick read of it, and then I'll I'll talk about it in just a second. <clears throat> so I chose this cartoon because I thought it was actually a particularly good cartoon given the context. Um, although we we often have problems with technology in the classroom that we use. CD players not queuing properly, TVs and DVD players that don't turn on or function as they were supposed to, and uh, internet connections that screw up things, uh, like programs we need to have installed but don't, or websites that are outdated, or don't show up on each computer in the lab the same way, or God forbid, audio problems, <laughs> <laughs> so that not everyone can hear the listening or the video we've planned. Believe us, we've had plenty of experience with audio pixies causing mischief That's in our true. webinars. Uh, when it comes to planning lessons that don't involve these things, it can seem a bit overwhelming, like the guy in this comic. Just imagine that the audio that the lesson in the course book is dependent on somehow won't play. Ah, what do we do? I don't know if we have to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big many stretch. Have, yeah. <laughs> many, of us have, many of us have been there and then prayed that we had the text in front of us to read. Yeah, exactly. So... Dogme ELT presents teachers with this unplugged alternative. Alternative, alternative. Alternative. <laughs> uh, it brings lessons back to the basics. Tools available in the classroom like the chairs, the pictures, the whiteboard, pens and papers, and you and the students as material for making lessons more personalized by using emergent language that comes up naturally. Uh, the idea behind Dogme ELT stems from and you can see there uh, on the left, a filmmaking movement set up by a group of Danish filmmakers who challenged what they saw as cinema's dependency on special effects, technical wizardry, and fantasy. Uh, the emphasis here is on the here and now requires the filmmaker to focus on the actual story and its relevance to the audience. Basically, they wanted the film to get back to the roots, which is storytelling, not on the special effects, which a lot of feature films tend to uh, focus oh, on I now. Yeah, more than the storytelling itself. Um, Dogme ELT was developed, again, sort of by a group of English teachers who challenged what they considered to be an over-reliance on materials and technical wizardry, quote-unquote, in current language teaching. And the emphasis on the here and now requires the teacher to focus on the actual learners and the content that's relevant to them. So we're going to take a look at this book which is called Teaching Unplugged, and it is by Luke Mettings and Scott Thornbury, who is uh, one of the authors with us today. And here's a look at the contents pages. Uh, the book we're focusing on uh, is from the De Delta Development, or sorry, Delta Teacher Development Series, and provides teachers with 97 activities that require minimal amount of outside materials. They stimulate conversation about topics immediately important to the students, at that moment, and they utilize language that evolves from the task that the students are given. Uh, it separates the activities into five sections. The first section, as highlighted there, uh, is about um, creating the right conditions. <laughs> Sorry, a little brain fart there. <laughs> Uh, and the right conditions means your language learners are relaxed and ready to talk. Uh, key things to think about with these types of activities are to encourage, right? Always be positive and generous with praise. Explain, tell, tell the people what you're doing and why you want them to do it. Help the students um, with the activities. They're not tests, so suggest ways to get started and to keep going. And show that you're focusing on their language. Highlight and point out the things that you would like them to notice. Make small changes as you repeat or write the language up at the end of the task and uh, extend them to help them to build on the existing language that comes up. So that's the first section. The second section is on ma managing conversation. And here it means to be actively involved, especially at first. So key things to remember with these activities are to participate, right? Take part in the conversation as a person, not just as a teacher. Engage the students. Show genuine interest in the people in the room and, and in what they say. 
model, show them how conversations can begin by demonstrating with the learner, and then step back as conversation starts to flow, um, invite more people to say more, invite them to participate, comment by pausing the conversation to highlight something that's proving difficult, and then you know gently nudge people, guiding the conversation to the areas that you want to challenge the class in. I think that's kind of a key point as well, Tyson, if I can jump in here as well. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of taking part in conversation. You know, a lot of uh, teacher training courses, that's not really, um, I don't know, I suppose uh, it's, it's not encouraged necessarily because the teacher does need to be in the position of, of monitoring, assisting gathering errors or mm -hmm. uh, bits of language for feedback and stuff. So I think, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying as well, but I, I do think there's room for the teacher to, to be involved, but I think that stepping back mm -hmm. is important too, that teachers don't get too involved in everything that they end up taking over the activity themselves. Well, that's true, and you know, it is, it's a danger for teachers to get too involved because they might get excited about talking about themselves as well. <laughs> and right. take over the conversation. <laughs> and then students talk about nothing, and they listen. Yes, but they listen. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, you know, although that can be a good thing, you know, and fun, of course, the teacher needs to step back from time <laughs> to time. <laughs> okay, so the next section is selecting stimulus to share. And this means to search beyond the staff room for what will get people talking. Um, for example, images. Uh, it doesn't need to be just text, right? You can use images to stimulate conversation. Objects, things that are found in the immediate surroundings in the classroom, um, and the, you know that stuff that can be passed around the students, um, and of course text. The shorter, the better, right? Um, and involve your class in finding things to share, right? Um, have your students look for images or text or print or something that's online that they saw that was interesting. Maybe they want to use it in the class. Have them collect things that they see throughout the city. For example, flyers or packages or letters or emails. Maybe even Subway signs, bus signs, <laughs> advertising. Is that called vandalism? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure they're supposed to take, to those take those tweet signs things. down. Yeah. But I got yeah. Luckily, the word collect in this instance <laughs> suggests collecting <laughs> their mind. <laughs> and of course, you know, be proactive. We want the students uh, to, to use what, what they get. So make notes, look around. When they see something that is interesting to them outside of the class, write it down. You know, um, have them heavily involved. Uh, the fourth section is about uh, focusing on emergent language. Or sorry, focusing on form. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and that means to explore language that has emerged in class. So recognize, retrieve, rework the words that are, that are used in the class. Um, draw attention to form in different ways, like replay, right? Repeat what the student says verbatim so they can spot the possible changes. Recast, repeat what people are saying, make changes, but without further comment. And, of course, refine, make direct suggestions that will help them improve their accuracy or expression. And I think those are types of things you learn in the teacher training stuff. And then, of course, the last section of activities is learning from lesson to lesson. And here... Uh, you should make connections at a number of levels, right? Uh, the learner needs to, needs aims, uh, sorry, put the learner needs and aims together and relate those to what happens in the class. Chart your course by recording the language generated in class and add this as you go along throughout the month. Refer to the language and the learner aims, um, but also external sources like a course book or syllabus. And uh, Tanya might talk about a course book later. Uh, anyway, make the most of what you achieve altogether. Remind the people what they've talked about, both in conversation and quizzes. Revisit language that has emerged in previous lessons. Don't just forget about it. And explore language inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom in, in little activities here and there. Sure. Right? Yep, makes sense. So there's lots and lots and lots of activities. That's the point. 